welcome back. Let me erase what I did in my. I should have done this before starting this, but it doesn't take too long. All right, we're in problem number six. Problem number six, and once again, a figure that has not been drawn to scale. I do that to you on purpose. Sometimes it is drawn to scale, and they say that it's not, but you shouldn't assume anything. All right, and they saying that this is 3x degrees. They say that this is 2x degrees, and they say that this is 4x degrees. In the figure above, three line segments meet at a point to form three angles. What is the value of x? Well, what are all of these angles going to have to add up to? Well, if you add this angle plus this angle plus this angle, what do you do? You've went all around the circle. So they have to add up to 360 degrees. So what's so 2x plus 4x plus 3x is going to equal 360 degrees. And what's 2 plus 4 plus 3? That's 9x. Let me see, this is always where I mess up. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9x is equal to 360. x is equal to, what's 360 divided by 9? It equals 40. And that is choice C. Problem number seven. Seven. Positive integers x, y, and z. So they're integers. Satisfy the equations. x to the minus one half is equal to one third. X to the minus one half is equal to one third y to the z is equal to 16. OK, those are the two equations. If z is greater than y, so z is greater than y, what is the value of x plus z? What is the value of x plus z? So the, the, the trick is, because you say, well, how do I solve for this? Well, the trick is that you know that these are all integers. So first of all, let's do this. So x to the minus 1 half is equal to 1 third. That means that. 1 over the square root of x, right? I just rewrote x to the minus 1 half as, you know, it, 1 half power is square root, and the negative means the inverse. So 1 over the square root of x is equal to 1 third. Or you could say the square root of x is equal to 3. x is equal to 9, right? So that was easy. We just solved this. You just had to know that a negative means to invert, and that 1 half power is the same thing as square root. Now, why does z equal 16? We got to come up with integers y and z where z is greater than y that uh, end up at 16. Well, the the number that immediately pops out is 2 to the fourth power. 2 to the fourth power is equal to 16. The other option was 4 to the second power, right? But 4 to the second power wouldn't have satisfied this because 4 is greater than 2. So the exponent has to be greater than the base. So 2 to the fourth. So and we know that because it has to be integers. So we know that z is equal to 4. So what's 4 plus 9? That's 13, right? x plus z, 13. And that is choice d. Next problem. Okay, I'm on problem number 8. And let me draw what they have drawn. They have, they have, see, they, I don't even know if it's useful for me to draw, but I will do it, because they've done it. And then they have a semicircle. So I could I could do a semicircle something like this. I could draw it like use the circle tool like that roughly. It's good enough. I could erase the bottom if I wanted to. But let's just assume that we only see this top part. And they say so this is point oh whoops, I'm still using the line tool. This point is four comma zero. This point is 8, comma 0. And they say, in the semicircle above, the center is at 4, comma 0. Which of the following are x coordinates of two points on this semicircle whose y coordinates are equal? Which of the following are x coordinates of two points on the semicircle whose y coordinates are equal? Well, this is a, this is an interesting question because it's not so much math, but it really just getting get, getting the intuition of kind of the symmetry of the circle. So it wants to know two points on the circle where the y is equal. So, for example, this point and this point, the y is going to be equal, right? And so it would be this point and this point. 
And similarly, we could, you know, we could say, well, this point and this point, the y's are equal. And if we take down, it would be this point and this point. The key is, is any of these pairs of points have to be the exact same distance from the center. And that makes sense. If we go the same distance to the left and go up to the circle, and we go the same distance to the right and go up to the circle, they're going to intersect the y-axis at the same point. So we have to look at their choices and see which of their pairs of choices are equal distant from x equals 4. Right? Equal distant from x equals 4. So the first choice is 1 and 6. 1 is 3 less than 4, and 6 is 2 more than 4, so that doesn't work. Right? A is 1 and 6, and that doesn't work, because 6 is much closer to 4 than 1 is. It's B is choices 1 and 8. Well, 1 is 3 away from 4, right? 1 is here. Well, 8 is all the way here. So 8 is 4 more than 4, right? 3 less, 4 more, not, doesn't work. C, 2 and 6. This looks promising. 2 is 2 less than 4. 6 is 2 more than 4. So that's like, you know, 2 less, bam, it's going to be there. 2 more, bam, going to be there. So that's our answer. We don't even have to look at the other ones. But if you look at the other ones, you'll see that they're all different distances away from x equals 4. Next problem. Problem number 9. If p is an integer, and 3 is the remainder when, OK, so let me write this, p integer. 3 is remainder when when 2p plus 7 is divided by 5. 3 is the remainder. Then p could be, OK, well, we could. there's a bunch of ways you could do it. But really, the, the simplest way, the, the very simplest way, is to just um, try out the numbers. And let me ask you a question. If When you divide something by 5, if you get a remainder 3, what is that number going to have to end in? Well, it's going to end in a 0 or a 5, right? Because any, I mean, sorry, it's going to end with a 3 or an 8. Because if something is divisible by 5, it ends with a 0 or a 5, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. All of these are divisible by 5. All of, and if you add 3 to any of these numbers, 8, 13, 18, 23, 28, and so on, 33, all of these numbers are going to have a remainder of 3 when you divide by 5, right? And then you could also say, well, so any of these numbers is going to be the numerator. Any of these numbers is going to be the numerator. So this number, any of these is going to be the numerator. And then you can actually, if you want, you could you know, subtract 7. But actually, we won't do that. What we could do is just try out the different choices they give and see if any of these choices end in a, create a number that ends in an 8 or a 3. So let's see. Choice A is 2. What is 2 times 2 plus 7? It's 4 plus 7, which is 11. It's not that one, because it ends with a 1. B, 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 7 is 13. We're done. And you can try it out. If p is 3, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 7, 13, divided by 5. Well, the remainder is going to be you know, 2 remainder 3. So it works. That, that was it. And it's good. We didn't have to waste time figuring out what C, D, and E. OK. And then, oh, I only have a minute left. So I will wait to do that, uh, the next problem in the next video.